well, yesterday worked just fine. There's no reason we can't replicate yesterday, is there? Is that what you're thinking? I don't know. I'd like this to get out on that point of rocks. See where those other deer go when they leave that other field. Get right to that little roll there. Yeah. Waiting on camera guys all the time. Oh yeah, there's some on the very edge. Normally I like to hunt in the evening because it gives me a really good plan on what the idea will be in the morning. But last night we had to do our Elk Talk Live Q&A session. So we drove way south of here to find a mountain with about one bar of analog or whatever old style coverage and that took the two hours of the evening the, the prime two hours so right now we're back here near where we were yesterday morning but where we can look in a few more directions uh, you'll see there's big uh, irrigated alfalfa field out here in the middle of nowhere and when you're in the desert irrigated alfalfa fields attract deer so they're out here feeding at night and then they got the whole 360 degree uh, sphere to go in bed so they just got to be up above and see where they go in bed and then figure out what the strategy is to get a stock on them once they go to their bed comes two more bucks behind him. So there's actually seven. We might get some, get an opportunity here, boys. What? We might get an opportunity. They're getting pretty close to the fence. Nissan Titan attracts deer like nobody's business. Even attracts rabbits right now. There's a rabbit licking the tires. What's your theory? You got a strategy? I just, I hate to push them off that, uh, that road goes pretty close to the, uh -huh. to the uh, uh, little patch that, you know, along the creek that they're going. I just 
hate to push them off. Of it, you think they're going to go up as far as those ones did yesterday? I don't know. But well, if we don't see them bad, we'll lose them. No, you're right. Yeah, we we got to stay on them. My plan is to jump in the truck, drive up to that little rise where we kind of went to yesterday, and wait and see if we can glass them up before they bed. Okay. Because yeah. if we drop down in here, yeah, we'll, we'll lose, lose them for sure. Yeah. And that road goes up, I don't know, what is it from here, maybe a mile or something up there. Should be able to see them then. So there you have it, folks. Here's how. Here's what you do. You go and you park your truck down here on the BLM ground, right on the boundary of the private, and you climb up the mountain. I wouldn't call this a mountain. This is barely even a ridge. And you just watch, see what goes on. And two mornings in a row, the bucks come walking right by my truck. Yesterday they came walking by, we were up there about, I don't know, three quarter of a mile. It's wherever we park that truck, the deer show up. So now we gotta watch them and see what they do. And hopefully when they get out in this big sage basin in bed, we'll still have a tab on them. Normally, I wouldn't drive near those deer, but those deer are heavily habituated to vehicles. Groundhog Day, folks. The deer are doing the same exact thing they did yesterday. So we're gonna go hide the truck again like we did yesterday. We're gonna climb up this mountain and let the sun bake us to no end. And then we're gonna watch these deer eventually bed. And we're gonna go and shoot another arrow right over their back. I like the confidence. You good with that, Dr. Jones? Uh, all but the last part.
Right ahead of us is a four by four. See him. Just a sage grouse right here. And that was enough to get these bucks up out of their bed. He said they're the nicest one of the group, the one we were hoping to shoot. Three and a half year old four by four. Yeah. He stood right there. Either my rangefinder is stuck on 52 yards or they just come to 52 yards. Closed the gap to about 50, 52 yards, and a sage grouse flushed right out from underneath us, flew across this little creek, and instantly the one buck we wanted to shoot stands up and he's looking at us. And I'm ranging him. There's just too much brush in the way, obviously, I'm not going to shoot, but I was getting any. The furthest I was getting was 52 yards, 49, 52. If that sage grouse wouldn't have flushed, we had about another 20, 25 yards out to this little point. Uh, whether or not we would have got there without spooking them, I don't know, but I was close. But I'm obviously not capable of making a wide open 52 yard shot yesterday, so why would I take a 50 yard obscured shot? I won't. I hope you're enjoying this, folks, because it is hot. It is absolutely hot, but the one cool thing that's going on, you see these big mountains here, you see that one over there even has snow on it still. Everybody is hunting up in those areas. And I think, as you see, the, we're right here in this little cut, there's a spring that comes out here. We've found about two or three areas that have springs that it seems like these deer are coming up here from some private alfalfa, they're not going all the way up in the mountains, so 
This isn't going to be one of those high alpine mule deer hunts you might think of in Nevada. We tried. Sage grouse. Teach me to be an advocate for sage grouse. That part about having to quote unquote scout while your days of hunting are tolling away. You're trying to learn the country while you're pushing to hunt. hunting. What should we do? There's there's uh, is some access. I mean you you get you drive through the ranch to to get to it, but there's a little chunk of BLM that uh, He's over on that side. It'd be nice to have an afternoon plan too. Or have some bedded or something. Yeah. Yeah, because these ones here, they aren't coming off on the public. They're short stopping right here right on the there. private. Right, yeah. So I bet you any money when that road crosses that ranch, you've got it gated. I'm just thinking if I'm a mule deer and I could live out here in this dusty, really dry, sagey desert, or I could go five or six miles down the road there and live in an alfalfa field. <laughs> yeah. I think well, I know it. I have to walk about oh, 300 yards from my bed to my feet. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just saying here. I'm trying to put myself in the deer's shoes. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought well, this might be one of those that uh, we could cross. That's all right. I'm part of scouting. You, you got to find where the roads are closed or not closed. So we can cross this off the list. It's been egging at me since I saw it on the map with yeah. that spring down there. Yeah. So. Now we got just enough time to get back to the hot spot there. <laughs> and I like that big tall three by four. That's the one I think I'm gonna kill. That tall three by four? He's yeah. only about 20 inches wide. But yeah. he's nice and tall. Yeah. And he just kind of grown on me. You, you hit that jackrabbit in the ears, he'll bleed to death. Seriously. Oh, there's um, some bigger bucks over here to the left, to the right, Randy. To the right. Uh, well, yeah, you want you want to get out. Four by three, three by two, they picked up another buck along the way. here. Well, here's the idea. <laughs> We're parked, looking at a fox, and a five bucks come up behind us, and uh, we spooked him that way. So I'm going to go about three-quarter of a mile down this fence line, see if I can intercept them coming to the alfalfa. Everywhere we park, there are bucks walking up behind us. It's crazy.
some of them now. Oh boy, there's a better one in there. In the back. somewhere out in here. I might want to come here in the morning. Watch where they're leaving the field. Dang it. Well, I hope you guys are having fun watching this. This is fun for me. It's completely different than any way we've ever hunted mule deer in Nevada. We've always went up high in the Aspens and Big Sage Basin. But right here, you can see there's a big pivot there. There's one behind me. There's one over that way, and there's one up that way. So there's four big center pivots here that are producing alfalfa. And you sit here at night, and every drainage has deer coming down from the BLM. And in the morning, you got deer going back up. I'm going to put this deer bone right on this corner here. Mark it on my Onyx map. And uh, I'll be walking in here in the dark in the morning. And Big Hank is gonna be walking right by. I promise you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you're enjoying it. <laughs>